Man, I really wish I had the best trail camera in the world. Oh wait, I do. It's an Exodus trail camera, guys. Do you want one? We're gonna give one away. Simple as this, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and comment for extra entries. If you're a subscriber, long-term subscriber, you know the drill, you know how this works. If you're new, that's how you do it. Simple as that, we're gonna give one of these bad boys away. If you wanna win, like, comment, and subscribe. Free camera, why not? Well guys, it's that time of year, or well, that time of year is nearby at least. Um, you don't have your buck tag filled, and you're kinda interested. And how, how, what, what's the best strategy to, uh, to kill January bucks? And I'm here to tell you, I've killed January bucks. And honestly, it might be one of my favorite months to hunt for mature deer. Okay, and there's a couple reasons why. We will get into that and get into the strategy as to how you could kill your January buck in a second. We are booking this time of year. So head over to whitetaillandmanagementservices.com. Hit the contact tab if you're interested in booking a visit with us. Um, we're almost booked up at this point. We're probably taking very limited um, bookings even, but we still probably can fit you in. So if you're interested in that, head over there, hit the contact tab, send me a message. Otherwise, go to vortexoptics.com, use code WLM20 for money off of apparel, and eurooptic.com, code WLMSVTX10 for money off of optics. So let's get into it. All right, enough of the BS, Brett. Let's get straight to the, to the meat and potatoes of this conversation. So January bucks, like I said, guys, January bucks, literally it's it's one of the best times of the year to hunt. And, and why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Okay, January is the time of the year in which most people are sitting on the couch, okay? At least come out to the blind and uh, you know spend some time out here and chit chat and talk to you loud like me at the very least. At least you're out in the woods. But, um, um, get out in the woods because nobody else is, okay? Everybody's done at this point. Everybody's given up at this point. And you still have some interest. And how do I know you still have some interest? Because you click this video and you're watching. So at the very least, just get out there and try, okay? So a lot of parts of the country at this time of the year have snow. Use that to your benefit. Find the big tracks, go to the food sources, figure out the, the, the trails and where they're headed, okay? All you have to do at that point is just find out where they're betting. And if you follow the sign, it doesn't get any easier. This could be your first year hunting. And here's the thing. I realize sometimes in these videos, I go way over people's heads. Some of you are new to hunting, okay? Well, it's as simple as this. If you have snow, find the food source, get the track, find the tracks that you wanna hunt, the big tracks, and follow them back to the bedding area, okay? Eventually you're gonna start jumping deer. That's your betting area, simple as that. So that's a tactic you can use. It, it, it's a little bit more in depth than that, but really what it comes down to is these deer are, are, are slaves to their stomach, okay? So there's a couple different ways you can go about this. If you're the private land guy that has the food, you know, you can sit on the food and you can wait and maybe you got good access. You can get in meat by, by having good access. What do I mean? You can get in and out of your stand locations a billion times without ever getting busted. And you need to be able to if you're gonna sit on a food source because otherwise those deer are gonna pick up on it they're going to be like, hey, why does somebody keep getting out of the tree stand every single night when we're trying to eat out here? Okay, they're not going to come back in daylight hours. So make sure that you have that figured out. So for the most part, the easiest way to kill January bucks is to sit on a food source. What food source? Okay, your greens and your grains are going to be super important this time of year. Depending on how much snow you get, I would probably stay away from the greens. The greens will freeze. They are, are, are a lot harder for deer to eat and it takes them way more calories um, they'll be burning a lot more calories just to dig them up through the ice and these things. So if you have the ability to have grain late season or have a farm field that didn't get harvested or anything like that late season that you can hunt over, that's what I would recommend. Okay, let's say you don't have food plots. Let's say you're not the guy with the food plots. You're not the, you're not the guy with the, the, with the crop fields. That's okay too. And quite frankly, my, my personal style would probably prefer that because then you're forced to get more aggressive versus just sitting back and watching from a distance. My favorite thing to do in January is get in tight to these bedding areas, okay? A lot of people like to sit on the food, but like I mentioned, it can be hard to get off of the food sources, um, you know, at the end of the hunt, especially in the evenings. So if I go in and I actually get closer to the bedding area, the perk to doing that is one, we're closer to the deer, which means we're probably, you know, our, 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 our chances of seeing deer are going to increase because we're closer to where they're bedding, okay? But the other perk is, um, is that those deer are gonna move past you and move on to that predominant food source, whatever that food source is this time of year. So if they do that, you don't have to worry about overpressuring them too badly because you can get in and out of that area without busting them because you don't have to hopefully go right through the food source or get off of the food source at the end of the night. So it's, it's really simple, guys. Just don't quit. Uh, it's a mental game at this point. 
some of you, you know, you might even have a muzzleloader season this late in the year. And if you can put the odds in your favor and honestly, maybe even go and try the bump and dump method with a gun in your hand, you know, the bump and dump method being find the track, track the deer back to their batting areas until you bump them. Then at least, at the very least, you have knowledge for future years um, and future hunts, knowing where the deer are spending their time. So if you do that, it's a win-win. And who knows, maybe you even get a shot at a buck at that point. So, um those are some of the main tactics that I would really think about using in January, guys. And I know this probably didn't blow your hair back in a lot of different ways, but it's simple. It really is simple to hunt bucks in January. So we stuck with some simple topics this time around and some simple strategy. Hunt on the food. If you can't, don't have the food or can't hunt on the food or can't get off the food without jumping deer, go to the transition area. And if you don't have the transition area and you don't have the food and you don't know where the deer are and you're starting from ground zero, find the tracks, find the sign, follow it back to the beds, and jump those deer out of their beds. Okay, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but at least you know where the deer are for future years. Otherwise, you're always guessing and just educating deer without knowing it. So at the end of the day, guys, you can still get it done. January can be tough, but it can also be amazing. So if you want to kill January bucks, guys, those are some of the simple steps that I would recommend following. So if you guys like these videos, you like these tips, you like all of this, this information that we're putting out, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're subscribed to our channel, you're entered in our giveaways. And who doesn't like free stuff? I like free stuff. <laughs> See you guys next video.